For what seems like ages, scientists have been hunting for another Earth, perhaps to find cosmic neighbors, or maybe just to have a backup planet for potential relocation in case we can't turn this one around. Now, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, they might finally have a strong candidate. It's called TRAPPIST-1e and is located 40 light-years away. 1e orbits a small star called TRAPPIST-1. It's an intriguing system that has seven Earth-sized planets, all of which are nicknamed with letters from B to H. While 40 light-years won't be reachable anytime soon, that's still close. Well, in space terms at least. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is about 100,000 light-years across. So compared to that, 40 is like a walk down the driveway. Or at least will be if our spaceships achieve a speed close to the speed of light, just like in the movies. Remember, a light-year isn't a measure for time. It's how far light can travel in one year, which is close to 6 trillion miles, which is a lot of zeros. So, multiply that by 40, and you get the location of TRAPPIST-1. So, bring a big lunch. T1 is a red dwarf, a type of star that's basically like a dimmer and smaller version of our Sun. It's only a bit bigger than Jupiter. Among this family, 1E sits in the star's sweet spot, the so-called Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, at a distance where liquid water could exist on a planet's surface if it has the right atmosphere perfectly habitable, at least for creatures resembling Earth's residents. However, it's not just located at just the right distance, which is a huge plus. 1E also happens to be a rocky planet. Its size and mass are close to Earth's, which suggests it has a similar density and structure, as well as similar gravity, meaning no cool jumps like on the Moon. Now Webb has picked up hints that there could be an atmosphere. The planet might be wrapped in gases like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane. We have such a mix over here, too. Earth's air is built from the same elements. Atmosphere matters. Mars lost most of it. Venus has too much. And Earth got it just right. That's why we have cozy weather and oceans. If 1E really does have something similar, it could mean clouds, rain, and maybe even seas. The stuff that would make Earthlings feel at home. However, here is where it gets interesting. We mentioned that 1E is a red dwarf star, and that makes it dim, hundreds of times dimmer than the sun. If you were standing on 1E, the star would look way bigger in the sky than our sun does here. But it would glow red and dull. It would be like living under a never-ending sunset. You might think, sweet, it would be romantic, until it gets old. I mean cold. It has to be freezing, right? After all, how can such a faint star provide enough heat for life the way our sun does? Well, funny enough, you won't need super winter-resistant jackets. The trick is distance. TRAPPIST-1e orbits extremely close to its star, just about 3% of Earth's distance from the sun. If the planet were sitting where Earth is, it would be a ball of ice. But being so close also means that its year is only around 146 hours. That means it takes 6 Earth days for 1E to resolve around T1. Celebrating birthdays every 6 days sounds like a great deal, huh? That's a lot of cake. But wait, does that mean that each season would last about 36 hours? No, because the planet is almost certainly tidally locked. That means one side bakes in endless daylight and the other side is stuck in eternal night. Not exactly Earth 2.0. Without an atmosphere, you'd get a scorched wasteland on one side and an ice cube on the other. But with an atmosphere? The air can spread the heat around, smoothing things out. In theory, the comfiest spot might actually be the twilight strip between day and night, the so-called terminator line. Again, a permanent sunrise or sunset. Instagrammers would love it. Red dwarfs are actually the most common stars in our galaxy, making up about 70% of all the stars we know about. And they live practically forever. Our sun is projected to last 10 billion years. Red dwarfs could go on for trillions. It's more than enough time for life to develop. However, the short straw is that red dwarfs are kind of feisty. They erupt with powerful flares that blast out intense radiation. So, for planets orbiting so close, 
Those flares can strip away atmospheres and sterilize the surface. It's like having a dream house with a beautiful view near a dynamite factory. Oops. That's what makes TRAPPIST-1E so exciting. If it does have an atmosphere, it would mean it somehow resisted billions of years of flare activity. And it might not be the only one. There could be plenty of exoplanets like this out there. Now, you may be wondering how scientists could possibly know what's going on with a small planet that's so far away. Well, they study light using a technique called transit spectroscopy. When TRAPPIST-1E passes in front of its star, the light filters through its edges, revealing clues about its air. Repeat enough times, and we start to see what it's really like. That's one of the most important features of the James Webb Telescope. It doesn't just snap pretty pictures. It dissects that light into thousands of slices, each revealing a different clue. It's also great when you remember that E1 is just one of seven planets that orbit so close. So scientists have a lot to study in that part of the universe. Each transit gives them a little more data, and after enough passes, they can start to rule things out. No thick hydrogen blanket? Check. No Venus-style carbon dioxide swamp? Looking that way. What's left is a planet that might, just might, have something closer to Earth's atmosphere. In other words, nobody's sending probes to TRAPPIST-1E anytime soon. But with telescopes like Webb, we can already peek at its air from across the galaxy. If you follow space-related news, you are already aware that 1E isn't the first so-called Earth-like planet that reached headlines. Astronomers have been teasing us with candidates for years, and each one comes with a but. As in, however, not your but. For example, Kepler 186f. Back in 2014, it was the first Earth-sized planet spotted in the habitable zone of its star. People were really excited. NASA even made a sci-fi-style travel poster. The catch? Oh well, just one minor thing. The fact that it's about 500 light-years away. Even if we build a spaceship that could cruise at a tenth of light speed, which we can't, it would still be a 5,000-year-long trip. Then there's Proxima Centauri b. This one is close, just 4.2 light-years away, orbiting the nearest star to our Sun. On paper, it's a dream. However, its star is even moodier than T1. Proxima exhales massive radiation flares regularly, which makes everything unpredictable and unstable. And then we have K2-18b. The James Webb Telescope actually spotted methane and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere gases which might hint at biological activity. Sounds great, except the planet is more like a mini-Neptune, probably wrapped in thick gas layers and unlikely to have a solid surface to stand on. The bottom line? When compared to all these, TRAPPIST-1E looks like the most promising one. Close enough to study, rocky enough to stand on, and sitting in a sweet spot where liquid water could exist if conditions line up. Of course, we still need more data. 1E could turn out to be a barren rock. But the bigger story is that we're getting better at this. A few decades ago, we didn't know if other solar systems even existed. Now, we've found over 6,000 exoplanets, with more getting added almost every week. Odds are, plenty of them will be rocky, Earth-sized, and orbiting in the Goldilocks zone. Maybe we can't go there, but they could mean the discovery of extraterrestrial life. That's the exciting part. Every time Webb or the next generation of telescopes take a look, we inch closer to answering the big question. Are we alone? Or is the universe full of neighbors? Hey, get your dog off my lawn. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.